everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is race number 10 in season number 5 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. We are here at the Michigan International Speedway for the NRLOA 500 back-to-back -back big races here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Of course, you can probably figure out why this is such a big race for this series. This is only the third season we have had it, and only the second time it's been here at Michigan. But still, all those NRLOA members out there want to get this win uh, because this is, of course, the NRLOA 500. We got the president, I'm assuming he's the president slash founder of the NNSCRA, Seth Cole, starting on the pole. We're great friends with them over there. And uh, he starts on the pole for the NRLOA 500. So a bunch of different leagues kind of coming together there. Got 42 drivers in the field as always. Let's go ahead and get these guys to roll off here for the NRLOA 500. 38 laps of action around this two-mile racetrack. And it should be a good one here today. It's a 76-mile race here for the NRLOA 500. And that is not exactly what I wanted to do right there. Uh, we used to do these starting lineups like that, but now we're going to do it like this, like we have done all season long. On the bottom of your screen, you'll see the starting grid here for the NRLOA 500. On the front row, we got Seth Cole and Jacob Reed starting alongside each other up there. A couple of Toyotas and a couple of Chevys back in here. Aiden Shepard and part-time driver John Andrews. And we got Tyler Selzman and Larry Ike starting alongside each other in row number three. We got John Arndt, the Atlanta winner, and Matt Tuck in the 78 starting alongside each other in row four. Cameron Gaju and Griffin Lynn in row number five. We go a little farther here. Nicholas Gratton and Harajil Arvin Alonso in row six. We got Zachary Fitzwater, Tristan Allen in row number seven. Lane Keys, Elijah Gordon in row number eight. And Bryce Lofor, Noah Cars in row nine. With the 27 of A. Troxel and the 26 of Landon Napa in row number 10. That's the top 20 starting positions here for the NRLOA 500 in season five of the Chick fil A Cup Series. Make sure that everybody's going to roll off here and take a look at the rest of the starting lineup scrolling up on your screen right there. And like I said, this is a 76 mile race here today. 38 laps around this two-mile racetrack in Brooklyn, Michigan, and it is the NRLOA 500, and it's here in Michigan because, as far as I know, at least three NRLOA members live in Michigan, maybe four. Quite a few guys from the NRLOA live here in this state, so that's why we hold it here. The green flag is out, and Seth Cole leads him to the line here in the NRLOA 500. The A3 is going to get the advantage here. He clears Jacob Reed. The inside lane is the place to be when we're in this big pack. But kind of like at Charlotte, the outside lane can work when these guys start to spread out. So you're definitely going to want to watch for that as this race goes along. Of course, there will be pit stops here today in the Inner Way 500. Now, when we used to have the 30-lap races here at Michigan... Um, we ended up with pit stops right near the end of the race lots of times. But now that this race is 38 laps uh, long, we can uh, make this race on um, two stops only, and uh, everybody is good to go. And it usually does not end up being a fuel strategy race at the end. There goes Tyler Selzman, three wide to the inside of Aiden Shepard and Seth Cole for the lead. We're four wide as John Art got put four wide by Tristan Allen and the five of Harajel Arvin Alonso. That almost caused a crash, but they're okay right now. And it's now Aiden Shepard on the outside of Tyler Selzman trying to take the lead. Seth Cole found his way back to the inside. It, look, it looks like he's going to get a run here on Selzman. Will Seth Cole be able to beat the 19 to the line? No, he won't. Tyler Selzman leads lap two here in the NRLA 500. Aiden Shepard here, Jill Arvin Alonso. Alonso came close to winning this race last season, driving the number 10, uh, but he was unable to get it done there. He has never won a Chick-fil-A Cup Series race, and if I'm not mistaken, of the guys who have and a race in every season here. He might have one of the longest losing streaks in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. He's been racing since season two, and he has never gotten a win before in this series. He's got quite a few races here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series without winning one, where Stuart Gretton broke a 118 race losing streak um, on Tuesday. Uh, so he is not the uh, longest um, losing, current, uh, losing streak holder anymore. And I think it might be Alonzo, but I could be wrong about that. Oh, no! 
Griffin Lynn just got moved up the racetrack, and around they go, down the back. Davey Johnson around Griffin Lynn, and they're piling up. Skip Nicky involved, Eric Almanor, Cameron Garlington, Ben Clark, Matt Dalio. Hard crash for the 88 as the 17 came into him. There's Eric Almanart all torn up on the apron. Larry Ike in the 98 also involved. And our first caution here at the Michigan International Speedway has come out. Tyler Salzman is the leader in the number 19. We had that caution-free race there at Charlotte on Tuesday. And it looks like we're going to get our first caution since Talladega here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series here in the NRLA 500. Cameron Gurlington, the Season 3 champion and the Season 3 Michigan winner involved in this one. Eric Almanart. I know Matt Dahlia took a hard hit. The 17 is done. Griffin Lynn with a lot of damage. Noah Cars. It's a hometown or a home state track for him. He's all torn up. Jonathan Skibnicki and part-time driver Ben Clark also involved in this one. And Matt Dalio also with a ton of damage. Let's go ahead and see how the pit stops go here on lap five. Tyler Selzman will lead him down once these set of pit stops are complete. We will go ahead and review the first caution here in the NRLOA 500. It's a tough break for all those guys involved. Really hate to see a crash this early on in the race. But then again, it's good to see a caution because it's been a while since we've had one here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And we're going to get a good, exciting restart here. Uh, when we do, in fact, restart here in the NRLOA 500. But anyways, we're going to follow with Tyler Selzman. He came in first. You got Seth Cole there in the first pit stall there. And it's going to be Selvin who wins the race back off the pit road. Matt Tuck's going to end up second at the end of this one. Michael DeFeo, Harajil Arvin Alonzo, and Aiden Shepard, the top five, exiting the pit lane. Let's go ahead and see what happened to bring out the first caution here in the NRLOA 500. So this is what happened here. We're going to go ahead and slow it down on the TV2 camera. The TV1 angle is a little low there. So it was kind of hard to see who was all involved. But uh, see Bryce Lofor and Jordan Newman, they get into each other. They get into Troxel. They get into Griffin Lynn. But they save it at that point. And Lofor and Newman are okay. You see a lot of these guys, they're passing the 27 and the 38. But look, they're going to go on five wide there for a moment. Um, it's just not enough room there for Griffin Lynn. He comes... Into the wall. Troxel is right below him. Troxel gets into John Arndt. I think those guys are okay, though. It's when Troxel comes back down on Davey Johnson. When the melee starts there, you see Johnson go around. But back, uh, back in here, Matt Dalio, Max Newworth, Eric Almanar, Jonathan Skivnicki. Kind of got pile drove by the 55 of uh, Ben Clark. Cameron Garlington's there. You see the 88 here of Matt Dalio go around. And a lot of torn up race cars. You see Garlington in the 23 trying to get to him here. You see Zachary Fitzwater, Nicholas Sam, and Eo. They get away with this one okay. But the 23 and the 10 of Eric Almanart, they're all torn up there. And you see Nicholas Gratton, he pile drove into the 88. And uh, it's a tough break for all those guys involved in this one. You see this and you know it's not going to work. Four wide at basically any place we go to here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series does not work. And uh, how about our last winner, Stuart Gretton getting away from this one. Troxel even got away from it, basically. You see Davey Johnson, he spun around. But the guys who really got it were the guys who were in the back of the pack. Almanard, Garlington, Dalio, Ben Clark, Skip Nicky, and Griffin Lynn also all torn up in the 38. Tough break for him in that front row racing machine. We're going to go ahead and go on board our last winner here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, Stuart Gratton in the 47. Uh, this one did not end too well for a lot of guys. However, the 47 did not get involved. And look at these guys come right across them here. How about Troxel there? And you see behind them, all the carnage ensues. But Gratton's okay, and so are plenty of guys still out there on the racetrack. Let's go ahead and restart here in the NRLA 500. Back here at the Michigan International Speedway for the NRLOA 500. We're going to have ourselves 37 guys still out there on the racetrack. However, not all of them will be able to continue. But anyways, these guys will be able to continue. They're running up front. Tyler Selzman, Matt Tuck, Michael DeFeo, Aiden Shepard, Harajil Arvin Alonzo, John Andrews, Bryce Lofor, Cameron Gaju, 
Jacob Reed and John Arndt. That's the top 10. And John Arndt's actually the Season 3 NRLA 500 winner. However, that race was run at the Spartan Raceway. Uh, this is only the second time the NRLA 500 has been run here at Michigan. But this is the fifth race here at this racetrack in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Anyway, Selzman leads the field to the green flag. Here comes Michael DeFeo for second underneath the 78 of Matt Tuck. Will he be able to do it entering turn number one and exiting turn number two? Yes, he will. A couple of Toyota teammates there. Here comes Aiden Shepard, a Chevy. We've got quite a few Chevys here. The number five of Herja Larov and Alonzo running up front. John Andrews in the 30 as well. Cameron Gaju. You know his story. He's been racing in every single season of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series full-time as well, but he has never made it into the chase. And, of course, he get into the chase by winning a race here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. He's running up front in the top ten. Good run for, uh, for the 32 here in this one. Oh, boy, that was close there with Aiden Shepard. And just to let you guys know, I normally have the strength of these races set to 108, but for this one, I decided to go to 110 because I've always noticed that this race has had trouble getting cautions, and since we really haven't had many cautions lately in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, I figured let's go ahead, just take a risk, and go with a 110% strength for this one. We might end up with a crash fest. These guys are running like crazy here at the Michigan International Speedway. Caleb Hoffman, the Rockingham winner, he's going to be in the chase this season. He's on the inside there, bumping around with everybody. And I'm telling you, these guys are doing a great job, but uh, I might have just jinxed it there. Three wide and whatnot back in the pack, and it is crazy midway through the field in this one. Anyways, back up front, it's still the 19 of Tyler Selzman leading this race. How about Garrett Sinor moving his Roush Fenway teammate to the outside to take fourth? Sinor was back behind the crash when it initially happened, but he has moved his way on the inside here. I'm the, an NRLOA member looking to get the win in the NRLOA 500. Well, right now, it's Tyler Selman, an NRLOA veteran driver, leading the field. Of course, most of these guys are NRLOA veteran drivers. But still, 19 doing a fantastic job here in Michigan, but this thing is far from over here in the NRLOA 500. John Andrews, how about this part-time driver here, running in second place. And Jacob Reed with a good run going for him in the 18. I think it's been since season two. I want to say it's been since season two since Jacob Reed has won a race. So he might actually hold the record for the longest losing streak uh, because I'm pretty sure it was season three. Here, Joe Lauren and Alonzo was a part-time driver, so he did not race in every race in season three. But it is possible. I think it's been since Rockingham, UK in Season 2 since Jacob Reed has won a race in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Now, I could be wrong about that. we got another caution. And down the back, Seth Cole, Trey Porto, Ryan Madden, and Abe Troxel all spin around. Josh Alexander involved in the 34. And our second caution of the NRLOA 500 has occurred here at Michigan. This one, fortunately, not as violent as the first one. But still, that's a tough break for our pole sitter, Seth Cole, the number four of Trey Barto, the 22 and the 20. And they're also involved there. These guys, especially DeFeo and Seth Cole, they were running up front at one point in this one. Tough break for those guys there. Selzman led every single lap of that green flying stint right there. And this 19 is showing some pretty good signs of strength here in the NRLA 500. We're going to go ahead and have another set of pit stops here. It is Tyler Selzman, John Andrews, Jacob Reed, Garrett Sinor up to fourth place in the 16. He really hasn't been having the season he has hoped for uh, here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. But uh, the all-time winningest driver, actually the tied all-time winningest driver in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, he's tied with Max Newworth. Looking to get his seventh career Chick-fil-A Cup Series win here today. You got Blaine Keyes and Cody Smart there. Stuart Gratton has moved his way up to seventh. How about Landon Napa, another part-time driver? Remember the Coca-Cola 600 on Tuesday? We had three part-time drivers finish in the top four in that one. The part-time drivers are doing good stuff again, as we got two of them in the top ten here at Michigan. We're going to follow with Selzman once again for this one and see if he wins the race off. And 
Uh, it doesn't look like he's going to because John Andrews in the number 30 got a great stop. So did Garrett Sinor. Sinor is going to be second, but it's going to be the part-time driver, John Andrews, who is going to lead the field to the green flag here at Michigan when we restart. But first, let's go ahead and see what brought out the second caution here in the NRLA 500. I'm going to go ahead and replay this one in slow mode right now. Trey Barto kind of gets up in the Larry Ike. They're four wide deep in the pack here. Larry Ike comes up in the Ryan Madden and Michael DeFeo, and DeFeo comes back down on Barto, Christian Master, and Seth Cole there involved. Nowhere to go for those guys. Ryan Madden comes back up on Aiden Shepard, and Josh Alexander has nowhere to go in the 34. Josh Crash also involved in this one. John Arn and Abe Troxel spinning around in the number 27. A couple of winners there, John Orn and Ryan Madden. They'll both be in the chase this season, but we've got a lot of guys who need wins to make it into the chase, like Michael DeFeo, Seth Cole, Trey Barto. Christian Master got away with this okay. I think he has a little bit of right side damage to his race car, but I think he'll be okay to continue for this one. But still, another tough break for all these guys. Good thing that Matt Dahlia did not arc a break into anybody because he was a little ways behind this one. Same with Max Newworth in the 93, winner here in Michigan in Season 2 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And I just said this was the fifth race. This is actually the fourth race we've had here in Michigan. I'm pretty sure we did not race here in season number one. I can't remember if we raced here in season one or not. But anyways, let's go ahead and, re uh, and replay it real time. Then we'll get to the restart here in the NRLA 500. Following the number four of Trey Porto. As he gets into Larry Eichen down the back once again. Doesn't work out too well. John Arndt got into the 34 a lot there. 34 bumped around on the wall. Madden, Troxel also involved. The Feo and Barto also spun around, and so did Seth Cole. Anyways, fortunately that was not as violent as the uh, first crash we had, but still, we might uh, have some guys get knocked out at the end of that one. This guy, John Andrews, won the race off of the pit road. And we're going to restart right now here in the NRLA 500. Back here at the Michigan International Speedway for the NRLA 500. It's John Andrews, a part-time driver, leading the field. But behind him, a lot of hungry drivers. Garrett Sinor, Nicholas Samadio, Jacob Reed, Tyler Selzman. How about these veteran guys here? Caleb Hoffman, Blaine Keys, Matt Tuck, Cody Smart. The only rookie in the top ten... And the five of Heritage Larvin Alonzo rounds out the top ten, coming to the second restart of the day. It's John Andrews leading the field in the part-time ride. Will we get our second part-time winner this season? Or will a veteran behind him strike? Garrett Sinor tried to look to the inside there, but then move to the outside. Will that open a door for the 13? No, the 16 gets a run to the inside. And there goes Garrett Sinor in the 16. Taking the lead away from John Andrews in the NRLOA 500. Here comes Jacob Reed in the 18. He's to the inside of Nicholas Samadio for third place. I mean, a lot of these guys running up front have been in the series for a long time. Sinor, Jacob Reed, Caleb Hoffman, they are all five-season veterans. Nicholas Samadio is a four-season veteran. So is Tyler Selzman. Got a lot of veteran drivers running up front here today. Garrett Sinor will lead lap 18. Next time by, we'll be halfway through this race. Nicholas Samadio down low to the inside of John Andrews for third. Will he get a run to the inside of Jacob Reed for second? Yes, he will. And the 13 is going to have his eyes set on the lead now. But Sinor pulling away in the 16 for now. Tyler Selzman led a lot of laps um, on that uh, second green flag run there. He's moved his way back up the fifth on a pretty bad pit stop, considering that he started deep as he did. I think he started like fifth. From first to fifth, that's a pretty bad pit stop, losing four positions. And uh, you see Selzman there currently running in fifth place here in the NRLOA 500. Jacob Reed to the inside of Nicholas Samadio for second. Garrett Sonor able to hold him off behind him. Jacob Reed to the inside of Nicholas Samadio. Will he be able to get it? They're side by side down the back. Tyler Selzman, he's going to look three wide, heading in the three. Nope, he isn't. He's going to stay behind his teammate, Jacob Reed. Cody Smart, a rookie driver, has moved his way up into the top five. And he's now going for fourth underneath the 13. Davey Johnson, 
was involved in that first crash. He spun around, remember that one. Here he is running in the top five now as he goes to the inside of Cody Smart and Nicholas Samidia. What about that? How about that? I used to say that a lot. I used to not know how to say that for some stupid reason. I used to always say, what about that? That doesn't make sense. How about that? Davey Johnson up the third after getting spun in the first crash early on in this race. But here comes the dominant guy of the day so far, Tyler Selzman to the inside of Garrett Sinor for the lead. Oh, and the caution's back out. And Zachary Fitzwater just took a hard hit in turn four, and somebody's upside down. It's Blaine Keys in the 48. The third caution of the day in the NRLOA 500. I don't really want to call this a crash fest race because we're getting about five to seven lap green flag runs here, which is pretty good. Tyler Selzman regained the lead back from the 16 before... The caution came out. It's a good day there for Tyler Selzman. He moved his way through the field very well. But we still got a lot of guys who want to get this win. But it's a tough break for Blaine Keys and Texas winner Zachary Fitzwater in this one. So the third caution of the race. We'll go ahead and see how this whole thing shakes out. Back onto the pit road, Tyler Selzman once again the leader. I think this is Selzman's race to lose, and he kind of lost a lot of positions on pit road that last time they came in, and that's why he was back there. But he got to the lead really quickly, and it's all going to come down to how these pit stops go for the 19. Because I'm pretty sure he can pull out in this one. I really think he can um, get an advantage on everybody on the racetrack. You just got to have a good pit stop. Now here, considering that we're getting frequent cautions the way we are, I think it's possible some guys might go on a little strategy here. Uh, we're just going to have to see. The 19 came in first, and it looks like it's going to be close. He's not getting off the pit road. And a little bit of a delay on his pit uh, stall or his pit, um, on his pit work there. Oh my goodness, I tell you, I'm sorry. A little bit of, the, of a delay... And he's going to fall all the way back to seventh. Six positions lost for the leader, Tyler Selzman. Guess who regained the lead? Garrett Sinor in the 16 back up front at Michigan. Let's go ahead and see what happened to bring out the caution here for the third time today in the NRLOA 500. So this is what happened here. Um... The damage on the 48 right now is just a glitch, as you see Elijah Gordon, Stuart Gratton, and Josh Crash, all Chevys with it. Uh, that is not legit da uh, damage there, but still, he's going to get damage after this one. Gaju kind of moves up slightly. Blaine Keys tries to avoid it, but uh, Zachary Fitzwater is there. And then the wall was there, and there was nowhere to go except forward. And his car was sideways at the time. Fitzwater with a hard hit in the 44, but I think Blaine Keys gets the award on the craziest ride for this one. And the 48 upside down here at Michigan. I think he might have barrel rolled a little bit here. Yeah, he did. Look at all these guys. I think Master hit him in the 14 because Master did blow an engine coming into the pit road there. So I think the 14 did hit the 48 there. Master, I think, is done for the race because I did see him coming into the pit road with a lot of smoke from his car. But uh, what about... How about that? I just talked about that, and there I go saying, what about that? I don't, I don't understand why I say that. How about that? Well, playing keys doesn't feel that way as he ends up upside down here in Michigan. And let's go ahead and follow with Fitzwater. Now Fitzwater's an innocent victim in this one. Keys comes up and there's just nowhere to go for the 44. It just happens so fast and that 44 is junk. Right the, the second it hits the wall, it's done. It's a tough break there for Zachary Fitzwater and Blaine Keys. Their days are gonna end prematurely here in the NRLOA 500. Anyways, Garrett Tenor took advantage of the misfortune of Tyler Selzman's pit. Pit stop, that's what it is. <laughs> I don't really know. I forgot what it was called. It's a pit stop. How did I forget that? 
But Garrett Sinor took advantage of the misfortunes of Tyler Selzman's pit stop, and it's now the number 16 who is leading the field here in the NRLOA 500. Will he be able to hold everybody off? Let's see right now. Back here in Michigan for the NRLOA 500, and it's NRLOA member, probably the second longest NRLOA member, other than Cameron Garlington. Garlington's the oldest NRLOA member, well, not the oldest age-wise, but the longest NRLOA member. Of course, you know, I've been around forever, but I don't technically count myself as an NRLOA member, but I still am. But anyways, Garrett Zanor, an NRLOA member leading in the NRLOA 500, but will he be able to hold everybody off? He's got Cody Smart, Davey Johnson, Jordan Newman, Jacob Reed, Matt Tuck, Tyler Selzman, Bryce Lofor, Nicholas Samadio, and Jesse Turner has moved his way up into the top 10 for this one. Go, say, uh, go ahead and see who got knocked out. Master, Keys, and Fitzwater are done for the day. Nobody got knocked out in the second crash, however, but uh, they're all back in here, as you can see, uh, with minor damage. Anyways, back to the front. Sinor trying to hold everybody off. Davey Johnson going for second underneath the 21. On lap 26 of 38 here in the Interloway 500. Garrett Zanor able to take advantage of that, but Davey Johnson has a fast car here in the 31. Will he be able to get to the 16? Davey Johnson has one career win that came at Kansas last season on a fuel strategy race. Jordan Newman in the 7. Matt Tuck and Tyler Selzman. Selzman has to move his way through the field once again if he wants to get back up front. Another troublesome pit stop there for the 19 team. Jesse Turner drafting with these guys here. And Alonzo rounds out the top 10. Alonzo's been kind of a sleeper for this one here. But uh, he's basically been in the top 10 this whole race. A good job by the five team there. Jacob Reed's also getting a good race here. And so is Tyler Selzman. Now, Selzman's a dominant guy of the race. Probably at this point behind Sinor. It's been Sinor and Selzman for this one here today. But it is very possible that uh, somebody other than those two can get this win. It's going to be 11 to go when we cross the line this time here in the NRLOA 500 in Michigan. There goes Davey Johnson for second underneath a Jordan Newman. Lap 28 of 38. Davey Johnson, remember, he spun around. He was involved in that first crash. But here he is running second with 11 laps to go. Plenty of time for the 31 to get to the lead. But this seven wants to stay in second place. And while these guys battle for second, here he comes. Tyler Selzman in the 19 to the inside of Davey Johnson. And he's going to get a run to the inside of Jordan Newman. He did this the last restart. He moved his way from the back to the front. He really wasn't that far back. But he still had to gain a few positions. And getting positions here in Michigan is kind of hard. But Selzman has moved his way up to second place. And he now has his eyes set on the leader, Garrett Zinor. Don't look now, but here comes Jesse Turner in the 43. He's got a pretty long losing streak. As a matter of fact, he has a longer losing streak than Jacob Reed does. So I did mention that Jacob Reed might be the uh, long had might have the longest losing streak. It's not. I think it might be this guy, Jesse Turner. It's been a very long time since he's won. Season two at Dover, which is 118 minus 26, whatever that number is. I think that would be 90. Four races? I don't know. But it's been a long amount of races for uh, Jesse Turner since he's last won here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. He did get that win in the Mellow Yellow Duel. However, that was not an official points win. But here he is running third in the NRLA 500. He got a really good run in the Coke 600 on Tuesday. Looking to back that, uh, back that up here at Michigan. He has closed up to Tyler Selzman for second place. And he's going to move to the inside and take second, heading into turn number one. Cody Smart looking to the inside of Jordan Newman. That is for fourth. He gets a great run there, and Newman's going to fall back to fifth. Turner is trying to get around the 19. He's got Cody Smart behind him to help. That's good for the 43. we got a lot of Fords moving their way up here. And it's a Ford leading. Garrett Zanor in the 16 continues to lead the NRLOA 500. But here comes Cody Smart for second. Trying to get to the inside of Jesse Turner. However, Turner does have help here down the front stretch. Selzman kind of side drafting the 21 there. And it looks like Cameron Black's going to move his way. Three wide for third. Turner's going to remain in second. And he's going to pull away a little bit from the three wide behind him. 
but it's still Garrett Zinor out front here at Michigan. Let me think, that second caution came out, I think we pitted lap 22. We're going to have to make another set of pit stops in this race before we're done. Because that's um, 17 laps to go when, we, uh, when these guys last came in. 17 to go is a little too far to go on one tank of fuel. This is going to be interesting if this thing goes green to the end. Because it is slightly possible somebody might be able to stay out to the end without coming in the pit. But I don't think it's going to happen. The fuel runs about 15 laps here in Michigan. And I don't believe these guys are really going to get a chance uh, to make it to the end without stopping. Of course, we're going to come down to the window where if a caution comes out, the race is going to end. And that's good news for Sinor. If he can keep this 16 out front, and a caution happens to come out with maybe, say, four laps to go, he's going to get the win. But here comes the Season 2 champion. It's been way too long since this guy has won. There he goes for the lead on lap 34 of 38. We broke a long losing streak on Tuesday. Let's see if we can do it again. Garrett Zinor trying to get the run on the outside of the 43. And the number 43 is going to get the run on the inside of the 16. I just got to text my apologies there for the little um, break there. But hey, Jesse Turner has just taken the lead here in the NLOA 500 with four laps to go at Michigan. Here comes the 11. Cameron Black looking to the inside for second underneath of Garrett Zinor. And here comes Stuart Gratton, our last winner here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Tristan Allen has moved his way into the top 10, and Matt Tuck is here in the 78. But they're all led by Season 2 champion Jesse Turner in the 43. Cameron Black with help from Jordan Newman trying to close up to the 43, but remember what I said. We're probably going to have to uh, have another set of pit stops before this thing is done. But then again, they came in on lap 22, but about, I say, two or three of those laps were under caution. This is going to be very interesting. I really don't know if these guys are going to have to come in or not. But Turner remains out front in the 43 as Jordan Newman goes for second underneath the 11. That's exactly what the 43 wants to see. Jesse Turner restarted 10th on this last restart. He moved his way up nine positions to the lead, and he currently leads it with two and a half laps to go in the NRLOA 500. Cameron Black with a fantastic run here in the number 11. Will he get to the inside of Turner? Not quite, but I think he's going to get the run heading into turn one. Jordan Newman's going to make it three wide for the lead with two laps to go, and Garrett Sinor's right behind him in the 16. Sinor's going to look three wide. It's not going to happen, and Cameron Black gets the run on the outside to take the lead away from Turner. Turner falling back on the outside. That's a tough break for the 43. It's going to be the white flag this time by in the NRLOA 500. And nobody is coming in, so they're going to be able to make it to the end. White flag for Cameron Black in the number 11 here in Michigan. It's one lap to go. If somebody behind there came in. I think that might be Larry Ike in the 98. Yes. And guys in the back are coming in here. But the leader... Has a half a lap to go, and he's the winner of the Interloe 500. Cameron Black currently leads it. Will he come in on the final lap? No, he won't. The number 11 of Cameron Black is going to be the winner of the Interloe 500 in Season 5 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Cameron Black wins at Michigan. Where did he come from? Wow, if there were a couple more laps to this one, these leaders would have had to come in. But Cameron Black, he got to the inside of Jesse Turner on uh, lap 37. And he was able to get the run on the outside and keep that 11 out front. It's Cameron Black who wins the NRLOA 500 for Season 5. And he's going to be in the chase for Season 5 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Great run for the 11 of Cameron Black. Jesse Turner finished ninth at the end of that one. Turner came so close to winning this race, but he got hung up on the outside, and because of that, it does appear that the 11's out of fuel here. 
as you see him on the screen there. But still, Jesse Turner came oh so close to winning. Garrett Sonor was a dominant car, and so was Tyler Selzman. None of those guys ended up running up front near the end. Well, I mean, they did, but none of them were leading near the end. It was Cameron Black who would come home with the victory here in the NRL Away 500. We had three cautions in this one, and those are the guys who got knocked out here today. And tough break for all those guys here in the NRL Away 500, failing to finish this race. But anyways, congratulations to Cameron Black in the number 11, the winner of the NRL Away 500 for season number five of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. He's going to be in the chase for season five this season. Anyways, congratulations to Cameron Black once again. Here are the points for the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, and that is it for me. I will see you guys later.